Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about pre-moving. So what is actually pre-moving? In online chess, a pre-move is when you make a move during your opponent's turn. Now this instructs the server to make that move on the next move if possible. So let's say you play e4 and it's your opponent's turn right now. If you play the move knight f3 while you're, it's your opponent's turn, uh, it will actually instruct the website to play this move if it is a legal move, regardless of what your opponent plays next. Now, this is a great time saver for when you're very low on time and a great surprise element as well. It's also nice for showing off your calculation skills, of course. So today we're going to see um, some of the good and bad sides of pre-moving and as well when you can actually use this. So first example, we have capturing your own piece. So after a few moves of the scotch game here, we have a good example of when pre-moving is very beneficial. So here, while it's black's turn, white can pre-move, queen takes their own knight. So capturing your own piece as a pre-move is always safe, because the only way that move actually happens is if your piece is captured. So otherwise it will get cancelled. So let's take a look at another example. Here we have some sort of um, endgame, and black will probably take our pawn here. Even, even if they don't, it's safe to pre-move h takes g3. Logic behind it again, the only way this happens, the pre-move, is if this piece is actually captured, making it a huge time saver. Instead of, in a real game, going here and then thinking, oh, what am I going to do? I'm not sure. This uses time. So instead of that, you want to think during your opponent's turn, think about which way you're going to recapture and make that recapture during your opponent's turn. Great time saver, especially when you're in time trouble. Then, number two is very important. Um, another way to pre-move is by relying on your assumptions. Now, here we just took our opponent's knight on h6 and we're assuming that they're going to recapture. Is this a safe pre-move, for example, if you want to follow up with queen h5? Well, not really. Even though we kind of know that this is going to happen next, we can't be 100% sure. So that's why you don't want to pre-move queen h5 here. The thing is that even though they will likely capture, and queen h5 is a pretty good move, defending this, attacking this, um, there's a chance that your opponent misclicks or something and plays g6, and then when the server plays your move, it's actually a horrible mistake. So there are safe and there are not safe times to pre-move. This would be an unsafe time to pre-move. So after this, you will play it manually, but not pre-move. So when you're forced to rely on assumptions, that's very dangerous. Another example, uh, the rook end game from before, a few moves down the line. Let's say uh, we assume black just goes rook takes a4, and we want to meet that move with a6. It's a good move. Um, the question is, can we pre-move a6 or not? Well, even though we're relying on this assumption pretty heavily, we can't safely pre-move it. Simply because, again, something unexpected might happen, maybe your opponent misclicks the a4 square and clicks b4 instead then the server automatically plays a6 <laughs> if you pre-moved it, and you lose a rook. So when you're forced to rely on assumptions and you're not 100% sure of your opponent's next move, it's not safe to pre-move. Then the number three point about pre-moving is you could do it when the opponent's move is completely forced. So let's say that we want to go rook takes h7 next move. It's a safe pre-move because black only has one legal move in this position, and that's king to b8. So we know that it must happen, so even though it's our opponent's turn, we can safely pre-move this. Let's see a second example. The opponent's move is completely forced, so we can pre-move actually the rest of the game here. Um, now this takes a lot of calculation, a little bit of experience, but as an experienced bullet player, I can tell you that this is pre-movable. So it's black's turn right now, and I know that they have to go king h7, and then I can pre-move king f7. Then their only legal move is king h6, I will pre-move g8 queen. Their only legal move from there is king h5, and then there's a very sneaky trick for white. Uh, we go with our newly made queen, queen to g3, cutting off these squares from the, from the black king, forcing them to go up into h6, and then we can pre-move this checkmate. I made it a little bit colorful, so it's easier to keep track of, but from here, with a little bit of calculation, you can come to the conclusion that you can pre-move this 
and then this, and then this, and then this for instant game over. Um, and it's safe to say, I mean, you can pre-move multiple moves ahead, and this will just end the game in 0.4 seconds, because usually a pre-move takes 0.1 seconds from the server, at least on chess.com. On Leechess, the pre-move is instant, I believe. Um, however, uh, you cannot multiple you cannot pre-move multiple moves in a row. So that is the drawback. Pretty cool example. Let's take a look at the next one. Again, let's take a look at how it goes wrong sometimes. Um, so in this position, let's see, this pawn is going down the board. And black is winning here. And white has... White is probably going to play king b7. But that's an assumption. That's not a completely forcing move. So what I see players do here is make an assumption and not realize that another option also exists. So after king b7, they pre-move queen c6, check, with the idea that white has to go down to b8, and then they pre-move rook a8, checkmate. The problem with that is that you have to consider all your opponent's options. So as soon as your opponent's move is not completely forced, if they have more than one option, you have to be extremely careful. So if you pre-move queen c6 here, aka play queen c6, whatever your opponent plays, there's a chance that he goes king b8 instead. And if you pre-move this, it's a stalemate. So game over. So make sure that your opponent's move is completely forced and you'll be able to pre-move like crazy. Those are some of the very important tricks. So now let's see the application of this. In this position, white has a forced checkmate. Now, a forced checkmate consists of entirely completely forced moves. So white with a little bit of calculation can pre-move the rest of the game here. They can go rook a7 check, black's only legal move is king b8, then they go the other rook, so rook f to b7, black's only legal move is king c8, and from there they can go rook to a8 over here. And since the pawn, this one, is defending the rook, um, that is a checkmate. Now let's see it on the board. So here, here, rook fb7, king c8, and rook a8 checkmate. So again, requires good visualization, good calculation, but it's a huge time saver. If you're in time trouble, you can always give a couple checks and then figure out what's going on, um, you know, but that's sort of the pre-moving um, masterclass here. So let's see an example from a Grandmaster game. This was uh, taken from a YouTube video of Hikaru Nakamura, the most uh, famous top Grandmaster at the moment, uh, famous for his pre-moves and tactics, insane calculation. So in this game, he pre-moved rook g3, queen h6, rook e6, queen e6, and rook g8 at the end. Now let's go very slowly and see what's actually happening and how he's able to do that so quickly. So he's applying what we just learned. When the opponent's move is completely forced, it's very easy to continue. So rook g3, check. King has to go to f8. Then queen h6, check. The king has to go to e7. So everything is completely forced, only legal moves. From there, rook takes e6, sacrifice, check. The only legal move is to take with this pawn over here. So pawn takes back. Let me clear some of the arrows here. Here, here, okay. And from there, the queen from h6 is going to take the e6 pawn, defended by the knight once again. The king can only move back to f8, and with our queen on e6 and rook on g3, we can go rook to g8, which is a checkmate at that point. Now, let's see all of that in the board. So rook g3, king f8, queen h6, king e7, now comes the rook sacrifice, rook takes e6, Pawn takes is the only legal move, queen takes e6, and rook g8. So now you can see why he was able to pre-move all of that, because black had no alternate choices, no other moves, It was everything was completely forced. So that's how the top grandmasters do it. It's also important to uh, keep in mind these situations, where your opponent's move isn't completely forced, but it's irrelevant. So here's what I mean by that. Here, white can pre-move the rest of the game, with just coming king close over here, getting the king close, getting the king to g6, and playing queen directly up. 
that will be a checkmate regardless of Black's move. So notice how Black has multiple options, but they don't matter at all. Because the queen is permanently keeping the king in this box. And with our king on g6 uh, and queen on uh, d8 over here, it will be checkmate regardless of where the king is. That's why we're able to safely pre-move all of this without any risk of checkmate. So sometimes these situations will happen when your opponent has multiple choices, but they don't matter at all. Let's see a second example, which is very similar. Now, you might be saying, oh, okay, but now black has many more moves, and they have two ranks to move along, not just one. So surely we can pre-move this, right? Actually, we can, but it's a little bit more difficult. So the pre-move sequence is get the king to this square and play this check, and then get the king here and play this check. Game over. Regardless of where the black king is, this will work. Let's see. So I'm going to play left and right first. Just to show the main idea. Here, here. Now, I was very careful here and said this check. Why did I not say this one? Well, because the black king had these squares of freedom and movement. So they could have been on C, I mean F8 in this position. We don't know that when we pre-move everything from the starting position. So if they were here and we played this move, of course they would just take us. So that's why we need to be a little bit careful and play this move. So that regardless of where they are, that will either be a check or cutting off the king. Um, so we play this move and they have to go to one of these. Again, doesn't matter. And now you can recognize the position from before. King G6. And wherever they go, we go up for checkmate. Very cool. Now, not king f6, because if they are here, this will not be a checkmate, because they have this square. So this requires, again, a lot of experience, calculation, visual, visual, visualization, a lot of key skills. But um, once you nail this, you will get rewarded. Because the only time you're, you're going to be playing this position, seriously, is when you have, like, one second or less. Um, so that's why it pays to know how to pre-move the entire game here. Next one. Also, this position should look a little bit familiar. Um, the opponent's move is irrelevant. So here we have a situation where the opponent has many moves, a lot of them. But we can safely pre-move rook takes c6. Whether that's a check or not, doesn't matter. The, the way we can know that we can safely pre-move that is that we take a very quick look at all of white's options and see that they have no way to defend this pawn one more time. They have no way of uh, setting a stalemate trap of some sort. Um, so we're just safe to pick it up next move. So this was this came from one of my games. I was playing black here and I pre-moved this very safely. I think my opponent played a5 or something. And now I went here, they went here, I went rook a6, there were better moves, but I was panicking, you know, you know how it is in time trouble. So rook a6. And now comes the situation from that we already talked about. I cannot safely pre-move queen c6 because I need to actually see where they go. So in this position, they resigned because I still had like two seconds, which is enough to win this. But um, the point is that I would probably very easily win this. So wherever they go, I will meet them with a check. And from there, I will find a checkmate very soon. So this was an example of a safe pre-move, even though my opponent has a lot of options. And that's where we come to our second main example of Hikaru Nakamura. And he took this position and pre-moved it until the end of the game, which was extremely, extremely impressive. And then, using these tricks, you will see how that's actually done. Um, so first of all, he played a5. Why a5? I mean, it's just generally a good move just to prevent any tricks with a5, a6, and takes, <laughs> if he decides to just pre-move until checkmate. So a5 first. Make sure that your opponent has no good moves. And all of their moves, even though they have them, are irrelevant. So this bishop is on the light squares, but you can notice that all of our sort of important pieces, mainly the queen and king, are the dark squares, which means this bishop can never capture them. So from here, he goes on to pre-move king e7, king f6, king e5, king f4, king e3, king d2, and then he has to make room for the king to progress further. So queen b4, king c3, queen b2, checkmate. That was the sequence of amazing pre-moves. And we now can see that this isn't as complicated as it looks at first. 
because all you have to understand is that your opponent's moves have to become irrelevant because for example if you pre-moved this there's a good chance that your opponent plays bishop f5 at some point and then your pre-move is cancelled and then you waste time so notice how he used only dark squares very smart and queen b4 was also a safe pre-move because it can never get captured of any kind so if there was a white pawn on a3 or if the king could somehow reach a3 and this wasn't defended then this would not be a safe pre-move but queen b4 is defended which makes it safe and um, this was a successful pre-moving sequence which led to checkmate very impressive and our final example of today will be again one of my examples which i recently posted on my twitter um, the question is which moves can you pre-move so in this position white is completely winning because all the pieces are nicely defended the black king is exposed and i thought of rook e4 Look, looks like a logical move the question is after rook e4 can i pre-move bishop c4 so my expectation was king d3 and then i go bishop c4 and then we're going to see what happens first question is can i pre-move pause the video try and figure it out I'm spoiling the solution in three, two, one. Okay, I, ho I hope you pause the video. Uh, the question, the answer to the question is no, unfortunately, because there's a chance my opponent plays queen takes e4, and then I pre move this, and it's like, oh man, I'm losing it now. They just save the queen and, you know, pick up my bishop or whatever. So it's not a safe pre move because it's based on the assumption that they can go here, which is not completely forced. So my opponent in the game did go king d3, and now I pre move the rest of the game. I went to bishop c4 and notice they have multiple options but they are both irrelevant because after both of them i go rookie to check and wherever they are on which whichever one of these squares they will have to go to c1 doesn't matter which one they are on they will have to go to c1 and then i play bishop a3 checkmate and since this is very colorful you can see that it's amazing no, I'm just kidding. So that's how the game ended. Bishop c4, pre-move rookie 2, pre-move bishop a3, and the game over. I was a bit in time trouble, so the pre-moves were necessary. Even if they weren't, it's nice to pre-move. You know, makes you feel like a grandmaster. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can apply this technique to save some time, impress some people, and uh, just all around have fun with it. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any questions. Like and subscribe if you want more videos like this, and I'll talk to you very soon. Enjoy.